You're watching The Wrap. This is a uh, show, this is a uh, network that uh, focuses on lettuce wraps. Yes. <laughs> Today we're going to be talking about a Thai, a Thai chicken. It's a Thai, Thai chicken, chicken lettuce, lettuce wrap. wrap. Yes, okay. just take a taste. That's all you, you need. Don't need yeah. You don't even need a lettuce wrap. wrap. You don't need the wrap. Right. Okay. And it's also, thank you. What's happening? <laughs> I did? Yeah. Lettuce wrap. Oh, we're not I'm Mike Berbiglia. And that's a wrap. And that's right. a wrap. With lettuce. This is our camera, by the way. You guys ready? Get started, quiet on set. Three. <laughs> oh, like two. Fucking hell it is. <laughs> This is Matt Donnelly at the Rap South by Southwest 2016 interview studio here with the terribly unfunny <laughs> cast and filmmakers <laughs> of Don't Think Mean. Twice. From the bottom, Mr. Mike Berbiglia, How director, are ya? writer, mm -hmm. the uh, lovely and amazing Gillian Jacobs, mm -hmm. and Keegan Michael Key, who is not at all being talked about at this festival. No. I don't really know. Oh, no, no. I, I got it under the radar. <laughs> this is the first time anybody knows that I'm even here. Um, Keegan um, flew in a, a private jet that was within a private jet. I don't know yes. if you've heard yeah. of this. Yeah, yeah. It's, he was in a team. It's like a hover. One person yeah. jet that was inside the jet. It's like what the Hyperloop's yes, gonna look yeah. like yeah. in California. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it was it's, great. It's, it's a like, um, one billion dollar flight. It's like serious. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. totally. It's, um, the film is Don't Think Twice. Congratulations. It, it, I think it deals with a very serious issue in our business, which is when you think about actors and you think about artists, I think people uh, automatically associate it with rejection, like, oh, the rejection, but no one ever talks about the jealousy. Oh. <laughs> and right. I think it's a real thing. So sure. we're always talking about it. Exactly. Yeah, 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 it's always about. It was so tense before we started this interview. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> the seating arrangement was like a 10 minute negotiation. I know, yeah. I know. Yeah, I mean, it, it is a thing. Well, I'm not so moving. Uh, I yeah. mean, right. I, my I'll agent pre negotiated. I'll I'm just in the. Put this Michael, here. I mean, okay, fine, then I have to Michael. walk, I guess. I mean, would that be weird? <laughs> I mean, is, it, <laughs> is it weird if Michael. we just. No, I'm just please. saying. Don't like, get a chair then, Mike. Oh my God. It's odd. It's so crazy. It's just not awkward at all. Mike, can you tell us what the film is about? and where the conceit came from and, and all that good stuff. Um, after I made my first film, uh, Sleepwalk With Me, mm -hmm. it came out in 2012, it was at Sundance, South by yeah, Southwest. Yeah, festival hit. Um, I sort of a took an inventory on, on directing my first feature, mm -hmm. and one of the things I realized was that my improv training that went back to like my freshman year in college, basically, mm -hmm. was what brought me through it. At a certain point, my wife made this observation, I thought really astute, she goes, it's amazing your stand-up comedian friends are so mean to each other. <laughs> <laughs> and your improv friends are so nice to each other. Wow. And, <laughs> and they're all equals on stage. Mm -hmm. But in life, like, that, that girl's a millionaire. That guy's, uh, you know, living on a one, in a one-bedroom <laughs> with five guys in Bushwick. And Studio City, yeah. And, yeah, and it's, and, and it's like, it's not fair. And I was like, that's a movie. Yeah. Mm. Like, it hit me so hard, like, oh my God, that it's such a great metaphor for what life is, which it, it, it's not fair. Yeah, and, and, and also there's a, you know, I was talking to another, another colleague of ours about the film, and, and, and he was saying, oh, are you doing that, that Don't Think Twice movie? And I said, yeah, and he's an improviser, this person. Mm -hmm. and, and he said, it's weird because a bunch of people, even if they don't talk about it, are sharing a dream. Mm. And then one person gets propelled right into the dream while everybody else is watching it. That's right. And yeah. sometimes the person who gets propelled into the dream didn't want it as much as other people Absolutely. did. Yep. And that's an element yeah. of the film. But to, just to just to say facts, the movie's about a, an improv troupe. It is. Who loses the lease in their theater, and while one of their members becomes like this huge sketch comedy star, mm -hmm. um, which is a terrifying prospect. But you you brought up um, that's a terrifying balance between like some people have natural talent and some people just have a lot of ambition. Mm. And how do right, you right. deal with those? In both hands. Absolutely. Well, I also yeah. think there's like um, some people have a natural savviness about this business mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. well that sure. you see propels them forward whereas other people like I think the character that I play in the film has a lot of talent but no interest in it. I, I went to Juilliard and I feel like there are people who really liked the kind of like it feels like the purest form of the art. You're studying classical theater, it's all about the art, mm -hmm. and then you're thrown out into the crass business of this. And some people really can't handle it. And that's okay right. too. Yeah, I totally agree. I think one of the things that I, I, I've always felt is like in, in, in my 20s when I was in an improv group and mm -hmm. I had this group of best friends, we all kind of wanted the same thing. Right. You know, the same mm -hmm. dream, exactly the same thing. I think there's something in your 30s and sometimes your 40s where you just go, Oh, oh! It doesn't have to be that, right? And and that's okay, and that's great, and it can be this variation on the dream, or it can be the dream, or it can be this a different dream. Thing yeah. When life happens to you, and you go, oh, that's better. 
Right. That's better than what I wanted all along. Absolutely. And, well, Keegan, I think you're going through this, uh, this moment. Well, both of you really are having this moment right now, too. Like, does it look the way you thought it would look? N no. no really? I mean, there's a whole nother. I mean, part of it is. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm having the moment. Yes, also. you're the writer director. I know, I knew. I'm so sorry. No, I mean, <laughs> if we're going to talk about moments. Yes. There's a triple moment happening. As the, it's a triple, triple moment. The I, power of the triple <laughs> moment. <laughs> no, we negotiated this with my agents oh my before gosh, we started Michael. this interview. Mike. I just think I'm if in one the chair middle. was no. in front of the other, it would have sort of a bus like okay, quality. How about, this? <laughs> how about I put this chair, this chair, right here? Okay. Yeah, yeah that's perfect. Perfect. He's perfect. He's <laughs> Okay, I feel super terrible because it's actually a great question. <laughs> it's a great it's a great question. It's it's for it's, all three of you. It's, no. There's a there's there's a, there's a there's a certain moment where there's something happening and a, there's a shift takes place mm -hmm. and there is not a manual for that shift. Right. Nobody you have to meet other people and mm -hmm. you, you you have to almost actively seek a mentor and say, how did you deal with this when this happened? It's like right. when first people have kids. You exactly. first have kids and you have to go find somebody who had kids and go, oh no, that's normal. Mm -hmm. Oh no, wait till they're this age. Oh no. So yeah. you, you're in this place where it's not, part of it is exactly like, there's little moments where you go, this is exactly like I thought it right. would be. Right. But 95% of it is new stuff that you're negotiating. Right. Yeah. And do people, um, I always, I'm curious, do people associate with the character on Love? Is that like, do people think that you're just like this reckless, um, they see you out and they're like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> that would be my worst nightmare. Yeah, right? I, I think people, if they are expecting that, are gonna be very disappointed because right. I am much more dull as a person than the characters <laughs> that I've played. Um, yeah, I think that uh, it it also never happens in the way you think it's going to. Right. And I think another thing about that you kind of touch on in, towards the end of this film is that no matter how good you think you have it, there's some part of your brain that won't just let you be happy. So <laughs> Amen. you're yes. just like, but I didn't get that, or I wanted yeah. that, or what about mm. this, or I see that person has that. For sure. It's like the jealousy point you're touching on. So it's like you meet, and then you meet very famous people who you think, oh, you must just like, sleep like a baby at yeah. night and they have a whole other set of worries that never even occurred to Absolutely. you so yeah there's no happiness so in this life this must be such a meta experience for you then because it's about your career and your life but it's not you know what i mean it's, it's not so, it, yeah. well it's weird it's not about my life it's mm -hmm. not autobiographical right. um it's very much about these six people who i created i mean you'll see when you see the film mm -hmm. i'm Nothing like the character. <laughs> nothing. Uh, nothing. He's nothing like the character. Um, and we're not it, being facetious right now. Yeah. Gillian would say when we did scenes, she would be like, Miles? My character's Miles. She'd be like, Miles is my favorite character. He's <laughs> insane. Oh, well, yeah. He's, Mike is very happily married to a, a wonderful, intelligent, talented person. His character is like still dating his like improv students living oh, in God. a tiny bedroom that has an enormous <laughs> pipe <laughs> running through, through the it, ceiling. Yeah. And nothing like Mike Verbig. And, he, and he's constantly bitter. But <laughs> I love that you gave yourself that character. <laughs> oh, That's like such a cool move that you didn't make yourself the like <laughs> slick guy in the film. Yeah, I, I, well, I, we had done a bunch of readings. I did like 10 or 11 readings at my house. Whenever we do the readings, I played Miles, Bill, and Jack mm -hmm. at all different times. Uh, and then Miles was the one that would just get laps in the room. Or it was like, oh, this is a... F so, it was that, so it was self-serving. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah and I'm going to give myself the focus most in laps. You have focus groups. <laughs> so. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, tell me which character I should... No, there, I there's <laughs> also other reasons I didn't play Jack, but I don't want to spoil anything in the movie. Incredibly well-deserved. Guys, thank you so much oh, for your thank time. You, thank you, man. This has been lovely. Michael, thank you so much. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. We'll set this up <laughs> just for the next I interview. I don't know who's you guys made here next. I just, uh, <laughs> I, we're going to have to do a reshoot.